Hey guys and welcome to the Watchtower Watch Views with your host DK and it's something a bit different. I'm actually going away on two weeks holidays and I have got to decide what to take with me in my watch roll. So I've got a watch roll, it takes one, two, maybe a third one if I take the strap off and slot in a strap here somewhere uh, and then I just keep a little section with a little polishing cloth and also a spring bar tool buried in down there at the bottom in case I need to adjust any watches on my holidays. So I'm going to plan to take four watches, one on wrist, two in the slots, one here with a strap taken off. The question is, what do I take with me? Well, one slot is actually taken up already. The reason for that is because there is a very special watch coming with me for a very special reason. I can't disclose what that is and I can't show you the watch because I haven't unboxed it on camera yet, which would give away why it's special. But there is one slot taken up. And I'll give you a little hint, it's a Seiko. So, what are we going to put in these two slots? Well, the watch I'm taking with me is sort of a mix of a dress watch and a dive watch. It's a bit of a sort of Thule watch. So, we kind of have that covered. But I'd still like to have a diver somewhere here. And then I'd like to have another sort of wild card watch. Now, there is also something that I think I should take with me just for safety. And that is a tough digital watch. So one of the options is this. This is my Casio G-Shock. It is a GW5600B. So it's a solar watch. It is a negative display, as you can see or not see, depending on the camera angle of this one. It has multi-zone time. It has radio connectivity. It has Bluetooth connectivity. And it kind of does everything. Now, that is one option. There is also another G-Shock I have, which I've reviewed on the channel. Somewhere about here, will I drop a link? And that is the DW5750, if I remember correctly. That is the watch that Blake from the US sent to me as part of his watch care package. Thank you very much again, Blake. And it's a watch I actually wear to the gym quite a lot. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this or the 5750. Which one should I take? Or as one other option we have, of course, the trusty AE1200. Now, I always keep this one on an elasticated NATO. You've seen me review this one. Again, there'll be a link somewhere on the screen here. I did a double review of this a good while back. It's a great watch. It doesn't have the solar. It does have multi-time. It's not quite the same level of robustness as the G-Shock because the crystal is sort of, or the crystal screen, whatever you'd call it, because it's acrylic, is not sort of inset further than the case itself. It's not recessed into the case. So it might take a couple of knocks. But honestly, they're not that expensive to replace. So if I had to buy a new one, it wouldn't kill me either way. So that is three options for a digital. Now, the question then is, what else do I take? Well, I have narrowed it down to about four watches. First one is something you've seen me unbox but not review. It is an homage of the Seiko SKX. It is the Ratio Freediver. You can see there that pop of AR coating, serious AR coating on this one. You've got a slightly domed crystal, I believe, on that one. Bit of refraction there. Excellent legibility on it. Great loom on this one as well. Bezel action is pretty decent. It is an homage though. So should I really take an homage with me on holidays or should I take something original? Well, if I'm going to take something original, I have two options. One of which is, of course, my Christopher Ward C60 Trident Mark II. So this is a big dive watch. It is 42 millimeters. It wears a little larger than that though. It is, however, high beat and it does have a Swiss movement inside. That Swiss movement being the Salita SW200. So you get a high beat, Swiss movement, nice attractive watch. You get a multi-level micro adjust on this one that you can just slot the bracelet in and out, which is very, very handy altogether. And of course, you can remove links if you need to. But I have this one set up perfectly for my wrist. So this one offers versatility. It offers Swiss made. It offers a bit of originality. And it offers a unique design as well. The question is, do I want to take it with me with these polished links? Am I going to scuff it up on holidays? Am I going to be babying it? Or do I just want to take something cheap and cheerful? Now, I did buy this one secondhand, so it is already scuffed up a small bit. So I don't know. Should I really care about that? I'd love to know what you guys think about that one, whether I should just bring an homage or should I bring some originality. Again, on the homage side of things, we're going to have another contender, which is my one of my favorite watches anyway, for sure. It is this Addy's Dive SD1970. It is, of course, an homage of Captain Willard. I keep it on this green Tropic strap or, well, Tropic, kind of Tropic. It's silicone Tropic anyway. It has quick releases, so if I want to change it out for black, I can easily do that. 
and it is just so goddamn wearable. It's really nice, insane loom, bezel action is pretty decent, if a little stiff, and I will actually be taking one of these watches diving as well, that is the important thing. Uh, I'm going on holidays to St. Lucia, we're going to do some scuba diving, so I might be tempted to bring an homage just to see if it does indeed last. Well, I'm not going to be down 200 meters anyway, especially now on my first dive, but it does actually last scuba diving. So I'd be tempted to bring an homage just for that to test it out and see if it holds up. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I'd be the only dive watch I bring. I do also have a major soft spot for this Citizen. Now, this isn't really a dive watch. It's a multi, uh, multi time, not a multi time. What do you call it? Uh, a world time and a GMT. Quite handy because, you know, I have family who are still in Ireland. So if I want to ring home, this would be handy for tracking exactly what time zone it is. However, if I bring the G-Shock or the AE1200, do I really need that? And I can't go diving with this because there is no loom at all on the world time. But it does look cool. It is one of my favorites. This might actually be my favorite watch. If the house was burning tomorrow, and hopefully, God almighty, it doesn't cost us enough, would I grab any watch? I would probably grab this one. Just because it's a Japanese import, it's a JDM, it's pretty cool, you don't see them too often, and I think it looks pretty striking. But let me know what you think, which one you'd actually like to see me bring. I may have the decision made before the video goes out, before the video goes out but I'd love to know your thoughts on what you guys would bring out of these four. I almost forgot to mention there was one other dive watch competitor, and that was my San Martin Sub Homage. Really cool watch, actually. I mean, look, it is an homage. It's got the San Martin logo on that clasp. Decent clasp as well. Four levels of micro adjust. I wear it on the furthest micro adjust. So if I'm going to the hot weather St. Lucia, I probably need to add another link in, move that back, and then when I get over there, I can play around with micro adjusts and all that kind of thing. But it is a really, really nice. That green is stunning. Bezel action is excellent. Again, this could be an option for scuba diving because there is good loom as well on the loom pip and on the hands and the dial. It is another one with a Seiko NH35 movement in it. Similar, of course, to the movement that is in the ratio, which is the NH36, which just features the day on it. And of course, the Addis Dive, which is again another NH35. So I have the option of a Quartz Japanese domestic market original. I have the option of an NH35, or I have the option of a Swiss Salita SW200. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'm only going to bring one of these, I think, so I'd love to know your thoughts on them. Last but not least is going to be my wildcard watch, and I'm going to start with yet another Christopher Ward. This is their, uh, I think it's the AMGT, it's called, uh, it's a really nice watch, it's a watch that I actually won and was kindly gifted by Dave Shores in the Christopher Ward Enthusiast Facebook group. Make sure to check those guys out if you are interested in Christopher Ward watches at all, because they are a wealth of knowledge and also one of the nicest communities on Facebook. You're not going to get any BS with them, they're fairly good guys. Again, this one does have the multi-level micro adjusts. You can slot it around, which gives it that versatility. It has, I believe, 100 meters of water resistance. I need to actually check that. Swiss made, do, 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 do. Where are we? Limited edition. Christopher Ward. Oh, it's 150, actually, meters of water resistance. So I could wear this in the pool and not worry about it because it's got a screw-down crown. No screw-down pushers, though. That is an option. It's got, you know, a lot of versatility for it. It's got an ETA movement inside. It's a quartz chronograph and it does the job very very nicely something different as well a bit unusual and that's why i picked that as a possible option for my something different now from completely original to unabashedly unoriginal this is my pagani design homage of the daytona featuring a vk64 mecha quartz movement there is absolutely no originality here other than the fact that i stuck it on a original handmade rally strap other than that pagani haven't done anything original with it at all very much an homage of the Daytona, but a really well-made one. You've got a date there for yourself. You've got your three, uh, you've got your three subdials, and of course you have screw-down pushers on this one. They claim this one, I think, has 100 meters of water resistance. Yep, 100 meters, as you can see just there, and it is stainless steel all the way through. But you do have that semi-mechanical chronograph movement hand. Push it down, unscrew the bottom one and you get a quick reset. So that is the advantage you get over the 
Christopher Ward. You have the fact that it's a quick set one. It resets really, really nice and quick. And also the fact that you have that almost mechanical looking chronograph. And now something different again, but again, very much a Swiss movement inside is my Zodiac. So this one is, I oh, it's not Renata. Who the hell makes this again? You know, I'm after drawing a blank. I did a review of it somewhere here. So check that one out. I have a real soft spot for this watch. I got it through Watch Gang. I have no affiliation with Watch Gang whatsoever, but it is a really, really nice watch. I think the fact that it's got the date, you've got your two sub dials, it's got a really, really nice color scheme. The leather strap is actually surprisingly good and comfortable. You do get a signed little buckle there with the target, the bullseye target almost for Zodiac. You've got a signed case back. And again, you have 100 meters of water resistance. So I could swim with this and not be worried about wrecking it probably wouldn't with the leather but still something different and again the color scheme is a bit different to any of the watches i've shown so far now we're going to go from there to one of the cheaper aliexpress watches i bought and one of the very first is the cadison c1032 now my mystery watch will kind of fulfill the dress side of things but i could always do with another dress watch and i love this thing i've worn this so much i've worn it to work i've worn it with suits I've worn it out around and it is just great. NH36 movement in the back of it. You've got your very nice, uh, are they Dauphine hands? I can never remember what they're called. I think they're Dauphine hands. No loom at all on it, but it's just really beautiful. I think the uh, sunburst silver dial is the way to go. There is a black version, but treat yourself to the silver sunburst. It's just better to me. You've got quick release leather strap on this one from Richie Watchbands. I think it's really, really great on this and it looks so much better than the price I paid which at the time, God, it's inflated significantly since then. But a couple of years ago, I think I paid 39 euros for this, which is absurdly low for the specs. You've got a sapphire crystal, NH36, stainless steel construction, 50 meters of water resistance, so definitely not going swimming, but this might be one to take out to dinner with the missus. And very, very lastly, we have got ourselves my one and only Flieger that stayed in the collection, the Escape and Time Flieger Chronograph. VK64 watch or movement in this one as well. Sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, date function, blued hands there as well. You can see there and decent loom as well. Now, no loom on the second hand, but you do have loom on the sub dials as well, which is cool. And you've got a sort of not a California dial. That's probably not correct. But you've got your Flieger with a traditional triangle, two dots. You've got your one, you've got your 11, your five, your seven, and then the two sub dials splitting two three four all the way out it is sitting on a strap that i bought at the moment i bought it actually second hand and a guy sent it to me with a whole bunch of straps a guy in portugal i'm after blanking on his name but i bought it through one of the facebook groups and i couldn't be happier with it that black dial is excellent the indices are very nicely printed on and it is a great great piece again i would love to know what you would bring from these four watches that i've listed there we've got this we've got our cadison so two aliexpress watches We've got our Zodiac and we have our, where did I put it? We have our second Christopher Ward. I would love to know what you guys think about these and what you would bring. For the moment, I'm leaning towards, hmm, if I had to put competitors for the watch, I have one slot filled already with the Seiko. I'm thinking possibly either the Ratio or the Addy's Dive as my budget dive watch. One of the two of those. I'm potentially thinking either the Escape in Time or the Christopher Ward. And as my one that's going to go on wrist for the plane, I'm leaning towards either my G-Shock or my AE1200. I'm thinking this is the one that's going to come with me for sure, though, because of the fact that it's resilient. And if I'm going to do any sports or going to the gym while I'm away, I think this is the one that probably wins. But guys, let me know your thoughts. I would love to know what you would like to see me bring on holidays. What would you bring out of my collection on holidays? And just let me know in future if there's watches I should pick up for a future holiday. Because God knows I hope I'm not making one of these in four years time. Which was the last time I was on holidays. Guys let me know your thoughts. I have been your host DK. This has been the Watchtower Watch Reviews. And I will be on my holidays for two weeks. So there may be a couple of videos coming out in the meantime. Hopefully you enjoy them. I might be a bit less active on YouTube though. Bye for now.